Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Tyler here. This is my eighth video. I'm gonna do like a uh, thing, like a follow-up kind of to my seasonal patterns uh, video, and it's based on a question by Bassmaster K Dub. He asked me like what my favorite things are to to pattern fish throughout the year, like my favorite lures, my favorite structure, I like target, and my favorite uh, like techniques, how to work the lures and stuff like that. I'm gonna start off with early spring, right after ice out, or you know pre pre spawn type of thing down south. Um, Favorite thing to use is a Smithwick suspending jerk bait. Now, key is suspending jerk baits. Um, what, what you're gonna want to target? I like to target is like any any like form of cover and structure in, in between the deep vertical break areas and their and their spring pre-spawn areas adjacent to the spawning flats. So, like anything in between the points, uh, like a rock bar or like a brush pile, weed line stuff like that. Um, now, what you're gonna want to do with what the jerk bait is is jerk it uh, like you would a normal jerk bait, and except let it pause for a really long time, a lot longer than you'd expect, like 30 to 40 seconds actually. Now instead of counting in your head, what I like to do is uh, pause it as long as I think, and then pause it for another five to 10 seconds. So that's just a rule of thumb I like to follow by. Now the rest of the video, I'm not gonna like base on like color selections and stuff like that any type of condition. I'm just going to do like my favorite type of techniques for certain times of year. Obviously there's a lot more, a lot a lot different types of techniques that you can utilize. But now pre-spawn is is um, the only time of year that I'm going to mainly target hunger strikes. Um, I like this, but like I said before, I, I mainly like to fish for reaction strikes. But, um, you know, what I actually integrate both, I actually fish for reactionary strikes and then slow down and fish for hunger strikes. Now what I like to do is, you know, one of my favorite things to do during pre-spawn is just fish uh, this 3 8 ounce man stone jig with a big grub trailer on the back, burn it pretty quickly, try and locate those fish. Um, fishing on main lake points and pumps and stuff like that, any form of structure um, where the bottom is a little bit different, right adjacent to the spawning flats. Now, also like throw lipless crankbaits, burning them pretty quick, diving crankbaits, um, spinner baits. Now after I've located the fish, I like to slow down and fish. Uh, if I'm fishing heavy cover, I like to throw just a grass jig, uh, like this Northland Jungle Jigs. Um, you know, big beaver trailer in the back. I think this is a 5 8 ounce jig. Um, also, if it's a long rock bar, I'll, I'll opt for a football head jig with a, with a, with a beaver trailer in the back. And also, um, slowing the swim jig down. That's another good option this time of year. Slowing it down, maybe switch to a quarter ounce jig or something like that. Now, there's uh, there's a lot of other different ways you can you can find these fish. Um, but just the key is, and a big Texas rig worm is another one of my main things. Um, once you found the fish, now now when they start to spawn in the backs of the creeks and stuff like that, there's one thing that I like to use all the time when I'm sight fishing and that's just a white tube with a with a plain mushroom head jig head. Now the big thing is 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 that exposed hook with the jig head. Um, because you know these fish aren't really trying to eat this time of year. They're mainly focusing on killing the lure or killing not the lure, but killing like whatever's in their nest, you know. So pitch it past the nest and just drag it over the top. And white tube you can see it really easily and some reason those fish just hate it. I mean they attack it every time. Um, so I like to opt for a white tube. Now, you can also utilize, if you don't like the bed fish, or you don't like the sight fish, stuff like that, you can utilize the same spring pre-spawn tactics as you use because fish will spawn, period. It'll be different for a lot of different fish, so it, it, it's a pretty long window. Those fish will stay in the pre-spawn. Now, you know, just, just fishing a swim jig, or, you know, if it's dirtier water and you know where those beds could be in, uh, you know, next to hard bottom areas, next to, like, dock posts, uh, trees and stuff like that, I'll throw actually a top water, I'll throw a big buzz bait and just try and burn it over as many nests as I can. Um, I like to do this even when I can't see the nest sometimes, you know, with a, with a trailer hook always on the back because they're going to they're gonna short strike a lot, they're not really looking to eat it, they're trying to kill it. So that's a good way to find them as well as catch them too. So um, Now, when you're in the post spawn, there's, the fish are going to be a little bit, a little bit weird. So kind of focusing on those same like transition areas like I said on by the deep by, by like their summer deep summer holes and where they have spawned I like to throw a drop shot uh, I don't really like to do it but uh, if I have to I'm gonna do it 
uh, just with a small like mineral type of profile bait. This is a poor boy's goby, I think it is. No, but a lot of people think those fish automatically jump and move, move, uh, move deep. But I think they stay shallow for a long period of time, actually, because um, the bluegills and stuff spawn right after the bass do. So they're gonna stay up and feed up as much as they can. They're gonna be a little bit shocked from the spawn because the spawn really does a number on their their system. So, but I also like to target reactionary strikes, like I like I said, um, top water. You know, working the buzz bait on the outside of matted vegetation early in the morning because those fish are going to be roaming around looking for food and they're going to pack into the weeds a little bit later during the day. Um, flipping heavy cover with a big jig. Uh, you know, working flukes actually is a good one of my favorite things to do at this time of year. Working uh, three different colors I like to use. Now one if they're minnows and shad. Um, fish with a white one. Now bluegills and stuff like that. I like green pumpkin. Um, and when those fish stop hitting those white color ones for the shad, I actually a fish will, will fish a pink one. Now, I don't know why, but, you know, I, I found good faith in the pinks uh, when they're not hitting the white ones as well as they should be. Or you catch a lot of them on the whites and they stop hitting, you know, switch to the pink one. That Sometimes it's all a difference, just a little color change. Um, that's pretty much it for my post-spawn. I mean, I also like to throw, you know, Square bill crankbaits, diving crankbaits on weed lines and stuff like that. But there's there's an endless time amount of things. But that's just my few favorite things to do. Now during the summertime, it's another one of those things where there's endless possibilities. Uh, but just as my favorite things go in the early morning, uh, Zara spook or a white buzzbait, uh, black buzzbait too. I basically fish white and black for the most part. Um, working on the outsides, uh, over the tops of weed lines, outside of heavy cover. Um, and then as those fish move in, I like to flip heavy cover. It's one of my favorite techniques. Fast, fish, fish it fast, flip it in, let it fall, pick it up and flip it again uh, with a Northland Jungle Jig with a beaver trailer on the back. Uh, I fish two colors mainly and that's brown, green pumpkin type of thing and, and black and blue for jigs. Uh, that's the only color I really use basically. I mean I'll obviously fish differently based on the conditions and stuff like that. but. Um, another thing I like, one of my favorite things to do is a uh, Texas rig worm uh, along those same things. And when I really need a fish, when I'm not when I'm desperate, but I wouldn't really when, when I really need a fish, I'll throw a frog on the tops of matted vegetation. This uh, Spurl bronzei black and blue frog. Uh, when they're sluggish, I'll throw the, the slop frog, and when they're a little bit more active or in the early morning, I'll throw this buzzing running frog type of thing. This is a striking rage tail, uh, rage toad. Um, those are my few favorite things to do during the summer. I'll also throw crankbaits along deep structures. I'll throw football head jigs on, on uh, deep structures and deep weed lines and stuff like that. So Now during the fall, um, key is as fast moving for when they're just looking for to feed up um, for winter. Uh, best thing to target is green weeds because it's going to hold a lot of oxygen. Those fish will group up there. Uh, fishing with a lipless crankbait is one of the best things that you can do. Uh, this you know, red eye shad is one of the best things you can use for this time of year. Um, also, chatter baits, ripping it through those same weeds. Jigging deep weed lines with a uh, heavy cover jig or a football head jig, whatever you prefer. And uh, actually, one of the best things I found is early in the morning. Actually, this, this early morning bite will actually extend a little bit longer because just based on the time of year, the days are a little bit shorter. Um, a big czar spook in the morning along deep along the weed lines. You can even fish this over 20 to 30 feet of water actually. Those fish will come up a lot a lot for those spooks. Uh, buzz baits is a good choice outside of the heavy cover. Um, for another reason is those females see something that looks injured, you know, they, they'll attack it out of instinct because it looks like an easy meal to them. So um, now the winter, I've said this plenty of times, football head jig, natural color with a pork trailer. Uh, there's nothing else I like to use during this time of year. Um, just crawling it down the deep vertical break areas and crawling it up if they stop hitting or something like that. You know, just change it up a little bit. Um, down south, cranking the uh, weed lines is because the fish are going to stay a little bit more active. Those, that water temp doesn't quite dip as low as it does up here. But And also uh, lipless crankbaits along the same weed lines, you know, 10 to 12 feet of water. Green weeds is another main thing this time of year. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to get going. There's a lot more things you can do during the year, but I uh, just showed you my favorite things. So, peace out, guys.